I'm here taking the art of package receiving to a whole new level. I mean, who needs doorsteps when you can become the master of the bench? Am I right? It's like Christmas morning, but with an added touch of covert operation and clandestine excitement. Now, let me tell you, this park bench is not just an ordinary park bench. No, 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 no. It's like the epicenter of package delivery greatness. The holy grail of mail drop-offs. Look at it. It's the perfect spot strategically positioned away from prying eyes, yet tantalizingly close to the action. It's the kind of bench that knows how to keep a secret. The, the, the James Bond of park furniture. Shh! Did you hear that? The faint rustle of packages being handled with care, the sound of anticipation fills the air as our courier approaches the bench. It's like a symphony of bubble wrap and packing tape, creating a mesmerizing melody that only packaged enthusiasts can truly appreciate. And there it is! Our treasure has arrived. Oh, the excitement, the sheer exhilaration of seeing a package left on the sacred bench. Join me, my fellow package enthusiasts, as we delve into the captivating world of bench-based package receiving. It's time to embrace the unexpected, celebrate the mundane, and unbox the magic that awaits us. So, buckle up, subscribe to my channel, because you will not want to miss this adventure. Trust me, folks, it's going to be flag package tastic. Oh, that reminds me. Let the unboxing commence. To the flag lair! And here we are in the flag lair. Welcome. So, what makes this package so secret that we have to go on some ridiculous rampage in park benches. Well, I've been told by the sender, who will come to shortly, that the contents include something that replicates the Cold War, or at least a very small part of it. So let's take a look, shall we? As always, packaged to the nth degree. Right. Okay, in no particular order, um, if I talk about fresh flags, it might help you understand where we're coming from when it comes to who sent the package. Now, this is uh, what looks like a yellow circle on a red and white background. I can't steal the fresh flag competition, so let's get straight to it. In amongst this, I've got two brilliant, 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 two little stickers here. First is the, um, the Flags for Good logo. I may as well tell you now. The sender is uh, Andy from Flagged for Content. And of course, the podcast, Flagged for Content, is a Flags for Good podcast. So that's why he sent me that. And, and there we have the, uh, a sticker of the Keystone flag, which uh, I have an episode. Uh, if you click up in this link over here in the blur, uh, that will take you to a whole episode that explains this Pennsylvanian keystone flag and what that means, what that represents, uh, and why it should be more of a thing than it already is. So uh, go check that one out. Back to the flag in hand, which is this rather intriguing thing. Let's just have a look at this and it is... <laughs> right, yes, of course. It's the flag of the Colorado state, the American state of Colorado. But I can tell you for nothing, for sure, that this is not a flags for good version of Colorado's flag. Uh, and the reason you can tell it's not a flags for good Colorado flag is because of the way the sea doesn't quite touch the blue, the top of the sea. Oh, on a, it's just a, here and here and here. Now on a flags, flags for good, um, Sea of Colorado, Michael's changed it slightly. So the sea just and catches, it just, just, just tidies it up basically. But this is beautiful. I've not got a Colorado flag. I mean, to be fair, there really isn't much wrong with the state flag of Colorado. So Colorado, that's good. Number one. Oh, okay, let's do this one next. Obviously, Colorado's got nothing to do with the Soviet Union or the Cold War. So uh, that's, that's not a problem. Now this one, ooh, let's have a look at this one. And here we go, right. Let's make sure I get this right. Now, here we are with the, the old Latvian flag uh, from the USSR days. 
If you want to believe Joey B, the flag guy from the uh, A Kiwi Two Brits and a Yanks Flag Sessions podcast, you'll know that he compares this flag with that of Kiribati. And you can understand why. I do have a bit of a fascination of uh, the Soviet flags, um, one I want to explore later. And, and so does Andy from Flag for Content, who sent me these. I think he's got duplicate ones, which is why we've done a bit of a swap on those. Um, and I'm intrigued, and I, I think it's partly because of the uniformity that sits behind the Soviet flags and how all the different countries, how all the flags had pretty much of a uniform to what the Soviets done. And I have a sneaky suspicion uh, that this is another one, if I remember rightly. <laughs> I think I gave him a bit of free option. The only one I said to Andy that I'll have the the Latvian flag and then anything else that he wants to give me. And here we go. Oh, this is an interesting one. So, uh, to be fair, this one I am going to have to do a little bit of a research on. Okay, seamlessly, this flag um, is the uh, Transcaucasian flag, uh, nothing to do with uh, any modern way that you might think about it. So it's, it's not, oddly enough, a pride flag, but Transcaucasia w was a nation near the Caucasus mountain range, um, which is today, if you think of Georgia in the northwest, uh, Azerbaijan in the east, and Armenia, it's set around that sort of area of the globe. And their flag at the time, many means ago, would have been um, this plain red one, but with the, uh, the very obvious Soviet symbols that come up with it. So that's Transcaucasia. And that's it for those three. Thanks to Andy for sending those over. I've sent him some, of course. That's how flag swaps work, I guess. But you can check out Flag for Content, his channel, uh, in the details below. So have a look there. And if you want to see some more ridiculous intros to flag unboxing episodes, then you're going to need this playlist over here.